Hi guys and welcome to another kit review. So today we're having a look at the kit from Tamiya in 135th scale. It is their SG Einheits Personen, Personen Kraftwagen Porsche 4x4 Type 1A. Okay, in 135th scale, as I said, you do get a driver figure with this. Now the kit number on this particular kit is 35052 all right this kit originally came out in 1975 uh, the kit number back then was mm152 so this is um a i hate to say a rebox i don't think anything's changed i think it's more a reissue or a constant issue this is part of tamia's bread and butter range all right so all manufacturers have a bread and butter the models they just keep producing over and over, like Tamiya's Kubelwagen, Schwimmwagen, um, these, their Pack 40s, anti-tank guns, etc. They're the bread and butter. Almost everyone who ever builds a, at least a 35th scale, has built one of these things at some stage. I remember building this back in the 70s, so... Is definitely exactly the same as what I had back then. All right, so enough of my rambling. Let's have a look at the box. Standard Tamiya. Okay. Vehicle on a white background. Okay, so as you can tell, this is an SS one by the number plate. These vehicles um, were part of the Wehrmacht's um, transport vehicle range. I believe... Most of these were superseded by the early 1940s, 41, 42, something like that. Although they would have existed right up until the end. I think they stopped production of these in 41 or something. Anyway, let's have a look at the box. So, Japanese, just a repeat of the box art. Does show you the figure that you get. Okay. Um, Tamiya. In fact, it does say there, right there. Sorry, that's out of black. 1975 Tamiya copyright made in the Philippines. So this is not the 1975 kit itself. This is just a reissue or a constant issue. All right, so other side, a few more Tamiya kits. 25 Pinder Quad. Standard Hanamag. 2511. And your eight-wheel armored car. So all of these kits, especially these two, were produced in the 70s. I'm not sure about the 25 pounder in quad, but it would have been around about that time as well. I did have that and that, and I actually have those in my stash right now. Okay, so that's the box. Let's have a look and see what's inside. All right, so one bag. That's the top cover. Is the sides of the horse itself. Okay, and your decals. Next bag is bottom of the vehicle, your figure, accessories for inside and underneath, including the dashboard, and the other sprue included is the wheels. Okay, so six hubs, six wheels. This was a 4x4, but it did have a spare wheel on either side. And your running gear. Okay, so two bags, three sprues, and instructions, and a bit of paraphernalia. So in a second, we'll have a look at the instructions. Let's have a look at the paraphernalia. Just text tips. You know how to drill holes, how to cut them off the sprues. Okay, and these are also instructions. Ah, I see. My bad. English, the other one's Japanese. All right, so let's chuck those out the way. Chuck the box out the way, and we'll have a look at the instructions in a second. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. All right, so literally what you have here is the full history of the vehicle, okay? photo of the actual vehicle in operation 
and and like I said, the full history of the types, the program that created them, including specifications, gross weight, etc. So these vehicles um, were created, or the program was created earlier on, pre-war, and they called for a light transport vehicle, a heavy transport vehicle, and a medium transport vehicle. So most of the medium and heavies that were in the program proved to be little more than converted uh, civilian vehicles, too heavy, too slow. So, but they need the Wehrmacht and the other German military arms needed something, so they went ahead with these. Okay, so there's your history. So open her up and we get sprue layout and as you can see there is only four sprues it clears and that's so this is a fairly simple straightforward build you probably spend more time painting her up than actually building it okay so list of all the parts and the actual what they are okay direction indicator wire rope parts seat stays etc so you know this is what that is it's not just uh Number one goes here. It actually tells you what the part is. Old school, 1970s Tamiya. Okay, so let's have a look. And builder. Okay, so start off with the bottom of the vehicle. There's no actual chassis. It is all contained with the mud guards, etc. So it's one piece. Very simple build. So you've just got your accessory bo boxes going on. Accessory boxes. Sorry, running gear, steering, okay, suspension, etc. And you get the wheels and hubs. So if it was up to me, I'd leave the, I'd put the hubs on, the wheels, leave them completely separate, paint them up separately, so that you can get into the mud guards without making too much of a mess. But that's entirely up to you. Steering, etc., goes on, okay. Four wheel steering, four wheel drive, all right, gives you clear indication of how the parts go together, all right, so bang, 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 and even though it does quote Tamiya colors, it even tells you the color, like flat black, all right, back in the 70s, Tamiya didn't have its own colors, so it did literally tell you what color to paint everything. Tires shouldn't be flat black, they should actually be a very dark rubber grey colour. And once you've weathered them up, they won't be black at all. Okay, so that's putting the wheels on, fairly simple. Construct the bonnet. Now this vehicle does not have an engine, so you won't be leaving the bonnet open, so you can have a look-see. Headlights going on gear lever, etc. You construct the cabin area and all that just goes straight on to the bottom. Fairly simple, like I said, very simple construction. Seats, all right. You got windscreen. And that's it, all done. Fairly straightforward. This is your driver's construction, so naturally enough, you don't put the steering wheel in until you put the driver in, or if you're not going to have a driver, leave him out. So these are updated instructions because it does mention Tamiya colors, okay? And then of course you've got cable. That's a towing cable that goes on the front. So you can have a choice here between having the full canopy on with the windows or just the canopy folded up on the back shows you how to wrap the cable around the front bumper and not all um, horses had that it's entirely up to you it was entirely up to the crew how they wanted to store their extra bits and pieces on the vehicle and if you look at the photos from World War II you'll see 
all sorts of field modifications on these vehicles. Okay, and you do also get an MT34 to fit in the middle. You don't necessarily have to add that on either. Okay, like I said, it comes down to personal preference and what you think or going to use this vehicle for. Okay, and that's it. She's done. Very simple. 13 steps and the vehicle is finished. And then you get to colouring. So your colours are basic. All over German grey. All over dark yellow. As I said, these were an early war vehicle. So the majority would be just straight German grey. You may, if you want to make one that was still being used later in the war, add a splash of colour on this. Red, brown, green. Okay. And same goes for your African one. This is all over dark yellow, but you could splash a bit of green on there and you wouldn't be wrong. Okay. And then you've just got your markings. So as you can tell on this vehicle, you get divisional and tactical markings. Okay, Africa Corps, Das Reich, 2nd Panzer Division, Cross Deutschland. Okay, so, and tactical marks, transportation, mechanised infantry, mechanised artillery, or a motorcycle infantry. So the choice is entirely you how you want to dress this up. Okay, so that's it. Pretty straightforward, easy build probably get this built within a couple of hours if you take even if you take care a couple of hours it's not a hard build like I said the longest part's going to be painting her okay so that's the instructions let's have a look at the actual decals there we go don't know that should be okay so as you can tell all white you do get crosses in this well one cross, I should say. <laughs> Number plates for Wehrmark and SS vehicles. And also Luftwaffe as well. Tactical marks and divisional marks. Okay. And these, I don't know if you can see, you can see copyright 1975. That's usually how you can tell a kit from the 70s. They have... SS markings in them. Kits nowadays, a lot of them, don't have them because they're not politically correct. Same as an old aircraft kit from the 70s will have swastikas, but not anymore. Okay, and the only other thing I'll show you now before I open the sprues is this. Yeah, here we go. Sorry, that went out of focus real bad, didn't it? Focus. That is your string. For the cable okay as you can see by the ends it's already unwinding so you may want to look at a replacement for that all right in a second we'll have a look at the sprues okay so let's have a look at the sprues and first off we'll have a look at the main underbody all right as you can tell there's no chassis it's all one piece with the mud guards in place, exhaust pipe, front of the cab, all right, radiator, top of the bonnet, driver figure, seats, etc. Okay, so let's have a look. So, like I said, this is a 1975 or re reissue, I should say, of a 75 kit. It does have, okay, as you can tell. A mesh all right for basically where you would stand or sit in the vehicle so the grills of course on the sides are not open but the detail is good the detail on the instruments is not too bad okay so it's not a decal you will have to paint those the figure himself well, I'd say passable, but there is a fair bit of flash on the mould line that will need to be cleaned up. 
and that's it there is a texture on the seats which is good there's a lot of vehicles don't have that but apart from that fairly straightforward let's turn it over and have a look on the bottom there you go that's your chassis so there's no bolt detail as such this is a fairly straightforward easy kit to build build this in a couple of hours i reckon that'd be an easy one okay so that's number one sprue Number two, we will have a look at the vehicle sides. So the doors, okay, so you've got two separate doors, right? So that's not too bad. So the doors could be opened if you wanted to. That's your canvas hood, which has got, all right, canvas stretches on it. So I've seen a lot of hoods from other vehicle manufacturers with no stretch details at all, which is a shame. That is your MG34. There is a fair bit of flash on this. I can see flash on the machine gun pedestal. Okay. So we'll need a bit of a clean up. But the canvas hood, as you can see the join mark on the canvas hood, that will need a clean up. So yes, the is a bit of flash because it is like I said a reissue of a 1975 kit steering wheel has a little bit of flash around it will need to be cleaned up let's have a look on the inside so there is handle detail but unfortunately there are also parts like this indents in the doors as you can see on the doors which will need to be filled being a, unless of course you're going to seal the top up but yeah the I would fill them anyway depending on how you whether you're going to have the wheels wheels sorry the windows up or down you will probably see those so a little bit of filler a little bit of sanding shouldn't be too hard to fix that okay so that's screw number two And sprue number three is just the wheels. Like I said, six wheels. These are your inner rims. There's your hubs. Okay. And that is your drive gear. Right? Your differential, etc. This was a four-wheel drive vehicle, so you would expect diffs either end. Alright, so let's have a look and see. So what I can see already is there is a fair bit of cleanup required for the join in the mold around the tires okay there are no uh, manufacturers words on the tires which is a shame because there would be just because it's a military vehicle doesn't mean it doesn't have a manufacturer's label or specifications on the tire apart from that it's your running gear so there's not a great deal of bolt detail on this it is an old kit fairly low detail i would say but it's not too bad cleverly tamia has erased the copyright on the sprues okay that means they could just keep churning this out and no one will know any better all right so that is the last of the main sprues the 
Yeah, and the other one is this one. That's your clears. It is, even though, an old kit. Pretty clear. Nice and clear, but entirely up to you how you want to display this vehicle. Okay. I like the windows, but personally probably wouldn't use them. Okay, and that literally is it. That is Tamiya's reissue of the Horsch 4x4 Type 1A. Um, like I said, this did come out originally in 1975 so this is one of their constant reissues easily available cost you next to nothing okay so as usual guys i hope you got something from this one and until next time take it easy